Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. You know. I have a new partner today. You do, huh? Yeah. Do you recognize that voice, guys? Yeah.、You、recognize that voice.、Yeah. You should change your name today, Tom, because your voice is so low. I'm Darth Vader. <laughs> no, actually, I have had a cold recently, so sometimes it does happen <laughs> that when you have a cold, your voice, voice. kind of goes down、yeah. a little bit. So, yeah. yeah, I hope you can understand me, but I'll be okay. And in any case,、uh, what we're talking about today is aspirin, which、Yay. might do me some good if I'm suffering from a headache, but yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe it can help me with my aches and pains if I have a common cold. But this is our history unit today, and we're talking about the pill that packs a powerful punch. Hey, check that out! All those P's there. It's like a tongue twister. The pill that packs a powerful punch. It's good, huh? It We、is. actually use the phrase to pack a punch a lot. We usually don't put powerful in there, but it's really cute because we've got one, two, three, four P's. The pill that packs a powerful punch. We do, it doesn't necessarily have to be a fist that packs a punch. It could be maybe、uh, something you're drinking that's really strong, or maybe you're eating something that's kind of、uh, spicy that can pack a punch.、Mm. But this is actually、uh, some sort of drug, a medicine that is pretty common these days. I think everybody has had an aspirin or two throughout their lives. I don't know. Aspirin, yeah, yeah.、Uh, it's not that common here. Not in Taiwan, I've noticed that. But it's in America, available.、Yeah. Uh, you can buy it in pharmacies and stuff like that, but、uh, in the U.S., aspirin is a common pain reliever, especially if you have a headache or something like that.、Mm-hmm. So, we'll be talking about the history of aspirin today, and we are calling it the pill that packs a powerful punch. It's a powerful pain reliever. So,、yes. let's get to it, everybody. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson right now. Whether you're suffering from a headache, muscle pain, or a common cold, aspirin always seems to do the trick. Yet, what is it about this tiny pill that makes it so effective at combating pain? The concept of using aspirin as medicine dates back to around 400 BC to the legendary Greek physician Hippocrates. He prescribed patients ground willow bark as a painkiller. Although it was extremely effective, the use of willow bark fell out of favor during the Middle Ages and only survived through folk medicine. Then, in 1757, an English cleric named Edward Stone nibbled on some willow bark and wondered if it had therapeutic properties. Stone began offering willow bark to people with fevers and learned that it frequently improved their conditions. Sparking further research into this herb, scientists determined that salicin was the active ingredient in willow bark, and this is what made it effective as medicine. After managing to isolate and extract salicin, scientists learned that salicylic acid, which is produced when salicin is broken down in the body, was extremely upsetting to people's stomachs. In 1897, German chemist Felix Hoffmann. Used a formula to neutralize salicylic acid and make it more tolerable to people's tummies. When the medicine helped relieve his father's arthritis, Hoffman convinced his employer, Bayer, to sell it as a wonder drug in 1915. As science advanced, it was learned that aspirin had even more health benefits than anticipated. Researchers have discovered that aspirin can reduce the risks of heart attacks and strokes in people. With a history of heart disease, as a result, many doctors advise high-risk patients to take an aspirin each day to prevent these conditions. So the next time you take an aspirin to soothe your pain, spare a thought for those clever chemists who made treating it so easy. Okay, everybody. The time has come for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson. We're talking about the pill that packs a powerful punch, or aspirin. Okay,、mm. aspirin. Now, whether you're suffering from a headache, muscle pain, or a common cold, aspirin always seems to do the trick.、Uh, here is a common pattern. Here, whether something is the case, and then you finish off with a statement. So、mm-hmm. here, whether you're suffering from a headache, if you're suffering from a headache, or if you have muscle pain, or if you have a common cold, well. Aspirin seems to always do the trick, and in the sentence we have the phrase "to do the trick." 
and that just means something is effective, and it's kind of a slang phrase. We use it,、okay? yeah. It's kind of informal, so don't use it in an official situation. But well, gee, I'm kind of thirsty. Maybe a pearl milk tea will do the trick. Yeah, we use it a lot when we're drinking things for some reason.、Mm. If you're really thirsty and you get a cold drink, ah,、oh, that did the trick. It was just what you needed. But we do use that quite often. So keep your ears open for some of these phrases that、uh, we talk about. Now, yet, what is it about this? Tiny peel that makes it so effective at combating pain. When something's effective, it does what it's supposed to do. It works right. We talk about medicine being effective. Maybe you have a new policy at work that's trying to change the way you do business, and it's really effective. It's working, so it produces the desired result. That's what effective means. But we'll often use it to talk about something that does the job it's supposed to do. When you combat pain, you're battling your Fighting the pain, and we use that word "combat." The noun form is "combat." The verb is "combat." Sorry about that, guys. We、mm. do that in English all the time.、Mm-hmm. So if it combats, it just means you're battling, you're fighting something. We use it to talk about war. They were in the 1909 combat. I'm making that up. So now we're going to go on to the second paragraph here. The concept of using aspirin as medicine. Dates back to around 400 BC to the legendary Greek physician Hippocrates. Legendary means someone's very famous. I think primarily we use it when we talk about people who've passed away, but not always.、Mm-hmm. Nope, not always. We could talk about the legendary violinist Itzhak Perlman, who's my favorite violinist. Oh yeah,、Itzhak、he's the guy、Perlman. in the wheelchair, right? He yeah, he, he's、uh, yeah, he can't walk. So you can be very very famous, you could be dead or alive, but people know who you are. If you're a physician, you're a doctor. Exactly, you are famous enough to be famous, or remarkable enough to be famous, and so this doctor, of course, lived a long time, a long time ago, back to around 400 BC. Yeah. So let's see, it's about what、uh, 2017 now plus 400, so that's about 2,400 years ago in Greece. Greece is the country, and then anything describing Greece is Greek, like the Greek language, Greek architecture, Greek、Food. legends, Greek. Greek Food. I love Greek food. Yeah. yeah, I guess it is pretty tasty. Yeah, it's so, good.、Uh, in any case, here we've got the word physician, and that's just a fancy word for doctor. Yeah.、Uh, sometimes doctor is used for people who have PhDs. You know, so if you want to be specific about a person, a medical doctor, being a medical doctor, yeah, you say physician. Sometimes you hear GP as well, general practitioner. That's only in England, though. Okay, well, I've heard the term, but in any case, you listen to British radio all the time. Maybe a little. I much, wanted to but, mention、yeah. though too, physician and doctor are the same, but surgeon is a special type of doctor.、Mm. He's able to、um, do operations, perform surgery, but physician and doctor are the same. Hippocrates is that famous physician that、uh, came up with this、um, aspirin, using aspirin as medicine. Before we go on, I wanted to mention too, it's one of these words where we have a pronunciation aspirin, which sounds like three syllables, or you can just say aspirin. They're both correct. It's like interesting and interesting. They're both correct. Okay, good enough there. So again, we're talking about the history of aspirin, and it dates back probably to Hippocrates. Around 400 BC, he was a legendary physician, and he prescribed patients ground willow bark as a painkiller. Now, willow bark—that、uh, is the skin of the willow tree, liu shu in、uh, English, in Chinese. That's a willow tree. So, shu pi is bark. So, willow bark is the skin of the willow tree. And then, if you take the bark off the tree, you dry it, and then you grind it down into powder. Then you get ground willow bark, and I guess at that time it could be used as a painkiller, which is something that kills your pain, gets rid of the pain, like morphine does if you're、yeah. having an operation or something like. Yeah, it's interesting. I've grown up with willow trees, and I never knew that the bark had this in it. Who knew? Wow,、hmm. it's pretty amazing. Wonder how they found that out.、Huh? Yeah, I know. Who's grinding up bark and eating it? Well, like a lot of things, they probably just <laughs> discovered it by accident. But、yeah. of course, if you're a doctor. And you want to give your patient some medicine,、mm-hmm. then you need to prescribe that medicine to them. Okay, so the 
the doctor prescribed medicine to the patient.、Uh, that's the phrase here. But he prescribed this willow bark to his patients to serve as a painkiller. Prescribe. That's the verb. And then the noun form is prescription.、Mm. Oh, I need to go to the pharmacy to get my prescription filled. Yeah, I've learned something very interesting having lived here now for you know eleven years.、Mm. You can't just walk into most of these hospitals and get a prescription like we have in the U.S.,、mm. which are written on a pad, and they have the doctor's signature, and they, you know, they can rip off a sheet. Here, everyone's、uh, using a computer. The only place in Taiwan. That I found that has a prescription that I can send to America and get filled is at the、uh, McKay Hospital, the Veteran、okay. Hospital. Yeah, who knew? So、okay. now you know, guys.、Mm-hmm. Your system is so up to date that your doctors are actually typing in a prescription that goes to the pharmacy in the hospital, and then it's filled. Well, when I lived in the U.S., I was、yeah. a pretty healthy boy, so、Me、I、too. never actually got a prescription in、mm. the U.S. And after I got、mm. here, of course, I got a little older. I'm still, you know, under thirty. You know, but of course,、uh, you know, still get a few ailments here and there. So I get prescriptions, or doctors prescribe medicine to me if I go see the doctor at the hospital.、Uh-huh. And although it was extremely effective, the use of willow bark fell out of favor during、ah. the Middle Ages. And only survived through folk medicine. So they were using this as a painkiller since ancient Greek times. Yeah. But then it kind of fell out of favor, which means it slowly became less and less popular.、Uh, they must have been finding different ways to deal with their headaches. Yeah, you might have、uh, a friend who's really good, who's got a good relationship with a professor or teacher, but then one day, yeah, your friend kind of falls out of favor with the professor. They're no longer getting along. So not. Popular, not not really getting along. This willow bark wasn't really something people were looking to anymore. Okay, everybody, that brings us to the midway point in our lesson for today. Let's take a break now and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 我们今天要介绍的呢是阿司匹林这个药丸。首先来看到第一个空格。Yet, what is it about this tiny pill that makes it so effective at blank one pain? 在这里大家都知道阿司匹林它主要的效果就是能够呢。停止这样子的疼痛，那么所以它在哪一个部分是非常的有效？我们看一下第一题的 A 选项 ，commanding 命令 ，B combining 结合 ，C combating。与什么战斗 ？D composing 作曲，阿司匹林可以帮助你有效的止痛，所以对于呢跟这个疼痛来战斗搏斗呢，它是可以说是非常 effective。所以第一题搭配文艺，正确答案我们就选择 C combating。接着来叙述一下他发现的这个历史。Blank two, it was extremely effective. The use of willow bark fell out of favor during the Middle Ages. 原本呢是发现呢，你去尝了这个柳树皮，然后呢看看它是不是有效，然后怎么样，它极度的有效。但是这种柳树皮的用法，到了中世纪就就不受到大家的青睐了，这实在是很可惜。所以在这里连接句意，第二题 A 选项 since 自从 ，B once 一旦。C until 直到 D although 虽然尽管虽然很有效，但是在中世纪却不受到青睐，只变成了一种民俗的疗法。搭配文艺第二题的标准答案，我们就选择 D although。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
it can't prevent, you know, a real heart attack. If you're going to have a, a bad heart attack, are going to have one.、Mm. But it's something that doctors use and prescribe to people with heart disease. We'll talk about that in a minute. Right now, we're going to go back in history to 1757, and there was an English cleric named Edward Stone, and he, for some reason, wanted to eat some tree bark,、mm. and he nibbled on some willow bark and wondered if it had. Therapeutic properties. You know, maybe that's how some of these、uh, medicines or drugs were discovered. People started eating different plants to see what would happen. Although that can be dangerous because some plants are poisonous, so be careful. A cleric is just another word for someone in a Christian church that's like a priest or a minister. Cleric. They use that word a lot more back in history. They don't use it so much today. It's more of a historical、yeah. term for sure. So this English. Pastor, priest, minister,、yeah. or whatever. Maybe he was sitting next to a willow tree, and some bark fell into his water, or something. Just like the same thing happened to Shennong in China,、oh. and that's how we've got tea now.、Huh. Well, for some reason we don't know how, but he nibbled <laughs> on that willow bark. To nibble just means to kind of chew on something, like rabbits、uh, when they nibble on carrots or grass or stuff like that. Just taking small little bites. So he nibbled. On this willow bark, and he wondered if it had therapeutic properties. So he wondered, hmm, maybe this stuff will actually do something to help people who are sick. That's kind of what therapeutic means. Something that will. Heal a disease, therapeutic, and that's related to the word therapy.、Mm. You might get therapy for a certain kind of illness, a period of treatment, or a kind of treatment. Yeah. Therapy. Yeah. If you hurt your knee, maybe you have to get、uh, some physical therapy, and、mm. someone helps you move your leg to exercise it so it gets back in shape. That's therapy. So that's interesting. He just started. Eating some of this willow bark and and begin thinking about whether it could be used. Properties seems to refer to things like features that something has, something that、uh, it can do. The properties.、Uh, let's see. Characteristics. Characteristics. Features.、Mm-hmm. Characteristics. An attribute is an, another word for that. So, and all drugs have different types of properties or things that that it, it can do. Different characteristics. Now, Stone began offering willow bark to people with fever. I don't know about you, Tom, but I knew as a little girl even that if you had a fever, you wanted aspirin because、okay. aspirin would help your fever. Well, he began giving willow bark to people that had fevers. A fever is when your body temperature is above its normal degree, so that's not good. And if you get too hot, it can kill you. So you got to be careful with that.、Right. And he learned or saw that it frequently helped these people that were taking his willow bark. It improved their condition, and that got him thinking. Hmm. I wonder what else this little willow bark can do. And so, when you spark something, you get something started. So it kind of got his brain thinking. Huh? I want to do some more research and see what else this aspirin can do. And so he did further research into this herb. If you're in England or some parts of the U.S., they say herb with a. Sound, but、uh, most educated Americans say herb. Herb, yeah. Actually,、yes. I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to say now, but、uh, yeah, we'll go with herb here. <laughs> so he wanted to do some additional research into this herb,、yeah. and scientists determined that salicin was the active ingredient in willow bark, and this is what made it effective as medicine. So if you chew on willow bark, well, that's nice, you know. But、mm-hmm. uh, scientists, of course, want to know why it. It works, so they have to break it down and examine its chemical structure. So they determined, or they found out, that the chemical in willow bark was actually called salicin. That was the active ingredient. In willow bark, an ingredient is just part of something. Of course,、uh, if you buy a product from a supermarket, you can check the label for the ingredients. Yeah. What is in this product? Flour, sugar, salt, etc. Those would all be the ingredients. That's right. So he did that research and found out what was inside, what this willow bark contained. He managed to isolate and extract the salicin. If you isolate something, you pull it apart from other things, so it's alone. If you feel isolated, it means you feel lonely. You're alone. You don't have friends. Sometimes that can be a problem. To to isolate though an ingredient or some sort of property just means you pull it. 
pull it out from the other ingredients, so it's by itself. And he extracted or took out the salicin. Scientists learned that the salicylic acid, which is produced when salicin is broken down in the body, that was really upsetting to people's stomachs. It hurts your stomach if you take too many aspirin.、Mm. I know because I've done it. Now, if you break something down in your body, it just means your body is digesting something and pulling something apart so it can use different properties. You know, maybe it's using food that you've eaten to produce some protein. Maybe it's giving you energy. Well, salicin is actually broken down. In the body as well, but it was hurting people's stomachs.、Uh, yeah, so、uh, when you eat food, your digestive system will break down your food so that your body can use it. So here, the salicin again, which is the active ingredient in willow bark, it gets broken down in the body, and as a result of that, it produces salicylic acid. Acid doesn't sound good. We hear sometimes about people throwing acid in people's Faces in various parts、Ew. of the world, which is no fun, of course. But in this particular case, the salicylic acid can upset people's stomach. It can make them feel like they have a stomach ache. So, way back in 1897, a German chemist by the name of Felix Hoffmann, he used a formula to neutralize salicylic acid and make it more tolerable to people's tummies. So, of course, this happened in Germany. We've got a chemist there, and that's his name there, Felix Hoffmann. That's actually a German. Name that's not difficult to pronounce. He had a formula for neutralizing this acid. If you have a formula, it's kind of like a method that uses various steps. To achieve a desired result, so he had this formula, a set of instructions, if you will, and ingredients that he used to actually break down the salicylic acid or neutralize it, which means to make it kind of in the middle. It's not too not too much like an acid, or it's not too much like a base. It's right in the middle, and as a result, it's tolerable to people's tummies. It doesn't give them an upset stomach. Yes, salicylic acid is also in things that we put on our face when you have acne. There、really? you go. It helps. Oh yeah, it's very popular. Okay. Now, when the medicine helped relieve his father's arthritis, that's when your joints in your、uh, bones when they ache. Hoffman convinced or talked his employer at the time was Bayer or Bayer. We actually call this company Bayer in America. It's a German company, and in Germany they pronounce it Bayer. And the Chinese is closer to Bayer. It's Bayer.、Okay. So it's Bayer, though, if you go to America. And he talked his employer into selling. This is a wonder drug, and even today, bear aspirin are the most famous, most popular. Most they they have the most sales for just aspirin. Okay, so、yeah. as science advanced, as science got better, it was learned, or they found out, that aspirin had even more health benefits than anticipated. If you anticipate something, you expect something. They、yeah. just thought this was a painkiller, but they found out, hey, aspirin can do more than that. And researchers have discovered that aspirin can reduce the risks of heart attacks, as you said before,、yeah. and strokes, which is Zhongfeng,、yeah. in people with a history of heart disease. So if you have this in your family history. History, or if you've had some heart problems, your doctor might prescribe aspirin for you. He sure might. Now, as a result, many doctors advise or give their advice to these patients with high risk for heart attacks and strokes. Hey, why don't you take one of these little aspirin every day? We actually call them baby aspirin. Okay. In America, they're not very strong, but they just do their job. They help your blood to to flow more smoothly, and、uh, that's just a common practice for people who have heart attacks or possibility of strokes. But don't do it. Unless your doctor tells you to, don't be taking medicine you don't need. So the next time you take an aspirin to soothe your pain, spare a thought, take a minute, think about these clever chemists who actually brought this wonderful drug or medicine to us. We're really appreciative of them. That's for sure. Wonderful. So that brings us to the end of our lesson. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. 接着来看到第三个空格。Then in 1757, an English cleric named Edward Stone nibbled on some willow bark and wondered blank three therapeutic properties. 到了一七五七年，这个英国的神职人员又尝了一些柳树皮，他想要知道，然后 therapeutic properties 代表着是治疗的特性跟
跟功效。我们来看一下第三题，我们在 wonder 后面想要知道这个东西是不是会有治疗的特性，所以搭配文艺，还有过去的时态以及文法句型结构，我们可以选择 B 选项 if。It had 想要知道这个东西是否有这样子的治疗特性，所以第三题的标准答案符合句意跟文法，我们就选择 B。If it had, 接着来看到第四个空格。我们从后半句来看，他开始尝试了以后呢，就知道这样子可以改善他们的病症。And learned that it frequently improved their conditions. Blank four. Further research into this herb. 首先呢，就开始研究，而且也发现常常可以改善他们的症状。这里呢，我们要使用分词构句，因为打的是逗号，因此也就激发了对这样子药草更进一步的研究。第四的空空格，我们可以选择 A 选项 ，sparking。spark 本来就有点燃跟发动的意思，而前面呢用 and 连接的动词是 began 跟 learned， 在这里呢并没有连接词，所以使用分词构句，这样的结果发动了后续更进一步的研究。第四题的标准答案就选择 A sparking。接着我们来看到第五个空格的句子。In 1897, German chemist Felix Hoffmann used a formula to neutralize salicylic acid and make it more blank five to people's tummies. 在这里提到一八九七年的时候，这位德国的化学家他用了一个 formula。一个配方来中和所谓的水杨酸，这样子的一个效果是 make it more。对于人们的胃来讲是比较能够怎么样的？我们知道吃药其实对胃是很伤的。我们来看看第五题的 A 选项 tolerable 可忍受的 ，B profitable 有利的 ，C honorable 可尊敬的。D remarkable 卓越非凡的，那么来综合一下，水杨酸对我们的胃来讲是比较可以忍受、接受的，所以搭配句意，第五题的标准答案就选择 A tolerable。接着第六个空格要考考同学语义的转层词，前面提到呢，这个阿司匹林可以降低这个有心脏疾病病史的人心脏病发跟中风的风险。然后第六个空格后面提到，有了前面发现阿司匹林对这些人有这些好处，因此许多的医生就会建议他们每天吃一颗来预防这种状况的发生。搭配文艺，第六题就选择 D。As a result。因此，前因后果的逻辑关系，其他选项都不符合句意。接着来看到第七题的空格。So the next time you take an aspirin to blank seven your pain, spare a thought for those clever chemists who made treating it so easy. 下一次，当你想要服用阿司匹林来怎么样疼痛的时候，你就可以呢想想那些让你呢帮助你止痛的这些聪明的化学家喽。第七题 ：A. Predict 预测 ；B. Devote 将什么奉献给 ；C. Soothe 舒缓 ；D. Reform 改革。阿司匹林帮助舒缓疼痛，所以正确答案第七题就选择 C. Soothe。Okay, 以上就是今天的课文讲解。谢谢收听。That's it for today. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and please make sure you join us again next time. And maybe if you get a headache, you will take some aspirin. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.